Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's update on COVID-19 in Alberta. Dr. Dina Hinshaw, the Chief Medical Officer of Health, will provide a brief update today. She's on a tight schedule this afternoon and will only have time for a few questions before we need to wrap up. I will now turn it over to Dr. Hinshaw. Thank you, Zoe, and good afternoon, everyone. Today, as Zoe said, my update on COVID-19 will be a little bit shorter than usual as I am providing new recommendations for Cabinet's consideration immediately after speaking with you. First, I need to share with you an update that we are making to case investigation and contact tracing. With a significant increase in new cases over the past several weeks, despite Alberta Health Services' effort to recruit and train new contact tracers and to make calls only to contacts in high priority settings, the team has not been able to keep up with the current demand. This means that there has been a slowly growing backlog of cases over the past several weeks who have not yet had a call from AHS to do the case investigation. To be clear, these have all received notification of their positive result. It is simply the investigation they have not had the opportunity to complete. We are left with an incredibly difficult problem to solve. In order to maximize the effectiveness of the team, I have asked AHS to start with the most recently diagnosed cases and work backwards, trying to reach as many cases as possible, but prioritizing the cases which will have the greatest benefit in reducing further transmission. Therefore, as a temporary measure, effective tomorrow, if 10 days have passed since an Albertan received their positive COVID-19 test result, AHS will no longer call these individuals to conduct case investigation and contact tracing. Instead, these individuals will receive a text message that will notify them to not expect a call and to provide them on guidance on if and when their isolation period has ended. All of the cases in the backlog, as I said, received notification of their positive test result and they were already instructed to isolate and notify their own close contacts via text message. I am sorry that this change will leave a group of people without the opportunity to have a conversation with AHS to understand where they acquired the infection and how to better prevent onward spread. But we must focus on looking forward and using our contact tracers where they have the greatest impact. I want to reinforce that anyone diagnosed with COVID-19 must stay home and distanced from all others, even members of their same household, until 10 days have passed from the start of their symptoms or until their symptoms resolve, whichever is longer. This is true whether or not cases receive a call. Because Alberta Health Services will not be able to get to every case that is currently in the backlog, I want to be transparent and also acknowledge that we may not be able to track and record every case that may be linked to a school in the last two weeks. School-aged children will continue to be part of the priority calls in the most recent cases. To date, our schools have done an excellent job supporting the public health measures and in school transmission has occurred only 182 times with 99 of these having only one new case as a result. I am confident that because of the diligence of our schools, parents, guardians and students, the number of cases in schools will remain stable and we will continue to see a limited number of transmission events in schools. The best thing we can do to protect schools is to lower community transmission. I recognize this lack of follow up of some cases is far from ideal, but we need to focus our resources on current cases in order to have the most impact. I want to reassure Albertans that we have always prioritized follow-up of healthcare workers and those who work in continuing care as their sam samples are flagged through a separate mechanism. Therefore, cases in these workers should not be part of the backlog. To further reduce this backlog now and going forward, effective today, all Albertans who test positive for COVID-19 will receive a text message instead of a phone call at the time of their isolation period ending. Now for today's update. We have identified 1,549 new cases of COVID-19 in Alberta in the last 24 hours. We completed about 19,500 tests yesterday 
and our provincial positivity rate sits at about 8%. There are currently active alerts or outbreaks in 304 schools, about 13% of the schools in Alberta. This number includes 64 schools that are currently on the watch list. There are now 328 people in hospital with COVID-19, including 62 in ICU. Sadly, I must also report five new deaths from COVID-19 in Alberta. My thoughts go out to everyone who has lost a loved one to any cause during this pandemic. I know that many families and friends continue to grieve those who they've lost. I have now reported 476 deaths from COVID-19, which is both a reminder of this virus's deadly potential and further proof that we must take steps to reduce community transmission. It's clear that we have reached a precarious point in Alberta. The virus is spreading faster and more widely than at any other point during the pandemic. Last Monday, we announced 860 new cases. On Sunday, less than a week later, we announced 1,584. The number of fatalities from this virus is growing and the number of hospitalizations and ICU admissions continues to rise, challenging the health system's ability to deliver the care that Albertans need in the future. This is impacting the care not only for those suffering but from, a, from COVID-19, but from a wide range of other health needs. To put it as plainly as possible, this is like a snowball rolling down a hill, growing bigger and faster, and it will continue unless we implement strong measures to stop. We must take action. Waiting any longer will impact our ability to care for Albertans in the weeks and months ahead. As Chief Medical Officer of Health, my role is to provide advice to government on how to protect the health of Albertans. Today, I will meet with the Priorities Implementation Committee of Cabinet to discuss a series of new measures to reduce the rising spread of COVID-19. Based on their decisions, we will provide a detailed update to Albertans tomorrow. I will also hold media availabilities every day this week to provide the latest information available and to answer whatever questions I can. We will provide more information tomorrow once decisions are made, but I wanted to provide this information today and to provide a message for everyone in our province. I need your help and we all need to work together. The spread of the virus, the impact on our health system and the challenges it poses to our health are serious. We all need to reduce our social and cohort interactions as much as possible. If you can adapt your life to reduce the amount of time that you spend interacting with others, please do so now. This is a challenging moment, but our province is strong and there is hope. We are seeing extremely promising news around vaccines and treatments, which may start being available sometime in the new year. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but we cannot let up now. Every one of us must do our part to limit the spread of COVID-19. We are in this together and we are strongest together. Thank you and I'm happy to take questions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Henshaw. There are many questions in the queue already today. Please be as brief as you can and limit yourself to one question so we can get to as many callers as possible. Operator, could you please put through the first call? Our first question comes from Kevin Nimick of CTV. Your line is open. Hi, Dr. Hinshaw. What specific restrictions are you going to propose to the Premier and the other ministers this afternoon? There's no one single way through this pandemic and the decisions around COVID-19 restrictions are very challenging. My role is to provide advice and recommendations and the role of elected officials is to make decisions on those policy uh, options and there will be more information available tomorrow. Operator, could you please put through the next question? Our next question comes from Jeff Slack of 660 News. Your line is open. Hi, Dr. Hinshaw. Um, are we expecting to see something similar to what we saw in March with non-essential businesses closing, or are you focusing more on targeted measures similar to what was introduced a week and a bit ago? There are a variety of options for consideration, and the uh, decision-making, of course, as I mentioned, is not easy. It will be up to elected officials to make a determination about what policy options they will choose. Uh, and my role, again, is simply to provide recommendations. Thank you. Operator, could you please put through the next caller? 
Our next question comes from Michael King of Global News. Your line is open. Hi, Dr. Hinshaw. What goes through your mind when you see that two MLAs, including one of the cabinet ministers you'll be speaking to in the next couple moments here, make claims downplaying the pandemic? They then have to retract this. And how difficult is it when you're trying to get the right information out? I think that uh, over the course of the last several months, particularly uh, over the, the summer, late summer, early fall, uh, I think uh, there were many people who hoped that, uh, that we had seen the worst of the pandemic. Of course, what we know now and what we can see not just in Alberta but around the world is that this virus spreads much more rapidly in the fall and winter than it does in the spring and summer. And we can see that the interventions that were successful earlier this year uh, are not as successful at the moment because our circumstances have changed. So we really do need uh, everyone to pull together. Uh, and I am grateful for the support of those who are reinforcing that message uh, and uh, making sure that that message is getting out there. Operator, could you please put through the next question? Our next question comes from James Keller of the Globe and Mail. Your line is open. Hi, Dr. Hinshaw. What are you anticipating in terms of hospitalizations and ICU use over the next couple of weeks? And what ability do we have to meet that demand, both in terms of physical space, but also probably more crucially staff available to treat those patients? We know that hospitalizations typically lag behind the rise in cases by about a week to 10 days. Uh, so we will absolutely expect to see a continuing rise in hospitalizations and ICU cases over the coming uh, two to three weeks. That is something that we would expect to see independent of, of any measures that are introduced um, at this time, again, because of that, that lag. The health system is working very hard to create additional capacity for these patients. But as I've said before, uh, unfortunately, that can come at the expense of services being available for other health needs, which is why we need all Albertans to pitch together to help us reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our communities. Operator, could you put through the second to last question, please? Our second to last question is from Rafi Bujikanian of CBC. Your line is open. Dr. Hinshaw, a few of us have asked you what the specific recommendations are, and I guess you cannot tell us that now, but uh, can you tell me, is that because you're concerned that you're going to go in with recommendations and the cabinet will not approve all of them? As I said, uh, my role is to make those recommendations, and it is up to cabinet to decide which options go forward. This is a very difficult decision. There are lots of factors that need to be considered. Uh, and so again, the, the process, of course, is that my team and I prepare recommendations that are then put forward for deliberation and consideration, and further information will be available tomorrow. Thank you. Operator, could you please put through our final question for today? Our final question comes from Sammy Hudis of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Hi, Dr. Hinshaw. You compared the current situation to a snowball rolling down a hill, growing bigger and faster, and you said that unless we put measures in uh, to stop it, it's going to continue. Hindsight's 2020, but should we have been doing this a lot earlier? I think that the uh, measure by which to assess decisions in the past is whether or not there were reasonable decisions made with the information we had at the time. Uh, and I think that Alberta is not unique in the experience of having an increase in cases over the past um, several months, but particularly the, the, the past several weeks, it's been accelerating. I think that the uh, benefit, the only benefit of looking backwards is to help us learn more about how to better move forwards with improved ability to, uh, to use what we've learned. Uh, and so again, I think that that question of, of what could have been done differently in the past uh, is really only a value add when we think about how does that inform what we do from today onwards. Thank you. That concludes today's availability. We'll provide another update tomorrow. Uh, have a good afternoon.